Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. I like that new intro. That's pretty good. You like that? Pretty cool. Yeah, you did that all this morning. That's insane. I did. Good job. So I'm not that talented. <laughs> it's not what I'm here for. You could be. <laughs> I want to bring up the comments again. Let me oh. see who's, see who's, who's joining on. us. Saying uh, good morning to us. I'm driving the bus, y'all. So let's see how this ends up. We yes. have Wendy. Welcome, everybody, to Paranormal Partners. Five. Episode five. Yeah. Wow. Very exciting. It's our part three of our Entity Voices series. Yeah. No with, pressure on Ron and Lourdes. No, none. Not none at all. all. No pressure at all. <laughs> Don't suck, y'all. Don't suck. <laughs> these, guys, these guys are really just an amazing group of three couples. And between the evidence they get and just their personalities, it's been a lot of fun having them on the show. And another great addition to our pair of family. So we're really excited about that. So I want to, uh, we watched a movie last night mm. and I want to tell you guys about it and it's very good. highly recommend it. It's very uh, true to the paranormal investigator. I was going to say that. The, yeah. Were you seriously? I was going to say that. Wow, I was that's say, pretty good. If you want to see a movie that really, really displays what we do as paranormal investigators, not what you see on TV typically, not but, the movie right. entertainment value. And in the words of George Chopin, to have fun doing it. Yes. You got to watch the movie Sleepless Unrest. So good. It's based on, it, it is the original Conjuring House. Yep. And they did a phenomenal job. They really did. They oh, did so good. Great job on the movie. It was very, very exciting to watch. Actually, yeah, I'm not saying anymore because you guys, it was have, very good. You guys have but to it, go watch it, it. It wasn't the you hear a noise <gasps> right. kind of thing. Like it was very true to the, you get the, oh, what was that? And then 30 seconds later, okay, let's go find out what it was. Yeah. It's, and, yeah, it's very good. And some of the evidence they got was absolutely incredible. It really <laughs> was. So, and they, they were there for what, two weeks, I think it was? Two they, weeks. Yeah, that was They crazy. slept there. They lived there. They <laughs> ate there two weeks. Yep. That would be amazing. Yeah, it was very, very exciting to watch. Excellent movie. I highly recommend it. Go stream it. It's on a lot of different platforms. You can yep. check it out. We got it on uh, Voodoo. We rented it on I Voodoo. Think so, Actually, yep. we bought it. So, yeah. so props to everybody. You know we're going to watch it again. Yeah, props to everybody who <laughs> had a hand in that movie. It was, a, it was yes. a really well done, good movie. Really, if you want to see what a paranormal investigator is really about, go watch it. Recommend yep. it. Very so good. enough of that. Enough of that uh, BSing. Without yeah. further ado, let's bring on our guests. Our guests. Ron and Lourdes. Hey, hey guys. guys. Hi guys. Good Sunday to you. Yes. <laughs> Same to you guys. So did you guys have a chance to watch that movie yet? We did. It was very good. I agree yeah. with you guys. It was right? really, really good. Yeah. It was well done. Yep. And, the, yeah. and so at the, like halfway through, I look at Keith and go, we should go do that. And then at the end I was like, mm, <laughs> I think I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, anybody who's done stuff in production too, will tell you that, that you're seeing a fraction of oh, the yeah. time that went into it, right? It's there's so much useless footage, just so much. Uh, what well, was an hour? It was like an hour and twenty minutes. Yeah. It was really, it was done really well, oh, and yeah. they did get. There was a specific um, part in the movie that I was like, I was amazed by the evidence that there was they were a couple, getting. Yep. Oh my god. <laughs> I was like, no freaking way. Yeah, <laughs> it, was really that was, it was, it was really good. Just, and, nope. and the whole thing, I mean, but like you said, it, it was an hour and 20 minutes and they were there two weeks. They had these cameras rolling from the minute they got there. They set everything up to the hour they left. So that's yeah. hundreds and hundreds of hours and they put it into an hour. Yep. So, yeah. and, and they had said when they were on a show that it was hard to pick what yeah. they were going to put in the Exactly. Movie. Yeah, so yeah, and we went yeah. we went and stayed at that house pretty much. Um, we didn't sleep, but we had it for a night, so we did like six, seven p.m. whatever it was until yeah. six, seven a.m. till the sun came up. Our group dwindled as the time went on. Yeah, we oh yeah, twelve people, then it was eight. <laughs> yeah, then it was four of us dumb people who were just like, just give me some more coffee. I got a run. I know. I'll be okay. <laughs> we can do it. I got a recorder yeah. and a cup of coffee. I'm fine. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> so did you get a whole night of it? When, yeah. when you guys were there, did you did you experience anything similar to what they experienced in the movie? Uh yeah, because that's where you got um that answer from. Oh well, Matt, when Matt asked that question. Yes, yeah, and there was some other stuff too that that we got. We got we got stuff. We have 
you know, a couple of clips from that place. Oh, even beforehand. Yeah. Tell them about the beforehand. Yeah, we did um both there and before there, we did um what's known as direct radio voice. It's not mm -hmm. as as popular for paranormal enthusiasts maybe watching. Um it's not the sweeping ghost box that so we love and use those. Um, it's, it's, it's a long wave or short wave or medium wave frequency. It's barren of radio emissions and you pretty much just leave it that way. You can do some things, uh, to filter it live for clarity, but for right. the most part, it's just a static unbroadcast frequency. And we did it on a long wave channel, um, for almost two years straight doing weekly sittings and logging data. Um, got astounding stuff. Um, speaking of astounding stuff. There's Tony Rathman. <laughs> <laughs> we know that guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is one of the best human beings and investigators in the business, bar none. Um, we we just we love that we work with them. That's a, we're always extremely grateful on a weekly basis. Yeah, and uh, I can't say I can't say it enough. Not just because we have you guys on here, but you guys are are an amazing group of people. You yeah. really are, and then, you know it's it's oh, no 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 doubt you guys get what you get and present it the way you do, yeah. you know, just because of who you are. So that, uh, we, we, that's all it, yeah. we appreciate that. We're, we're, we're grateful to be in the company that we're in with Chris and Audra and Tony and Shuri every week. And then we get yeah. guests like you guys who have been on with us, um, which only makes it more fun for us. And being right. part of your show now, thank you so much. Yeah. You're yeah. welcome. Absolutely. You're thank welcome. you guys. I am super excited because you guys have a trip where everybody's getting together in October. Yeah. Uh, actually, no. In a few weeks, in August. Oh, um, oh my goodness! Yeah. I'm so excited. Yeah. I can't wait oh, to see what you guys get. Oh, we gotta get we were trying to do this for a while because we were also very close, and we've not spent time in the same room investigating. Yeah. And very sadly to us, that you know, Chris and Audra's schedule does not uh, permit being able to join us. We tried everything shy of kidnapping to get them there. <laughs> um, Don't they have weddings or something coming up? <laughs> <laughs> haven't ruled that out yet, but he's very hard to sneak up on because he notices everything. Yeah, <laughs> right. I say he's going to have to be distracted or something. Yeah, big time. <laughs> so we were really we wanted to do this for a while, and then what what ended up happening was, in all honesty, is that we both took a vacation week in August, the first uh, second week from the ninth, and we're yeah. all right. We're going to go out to Arizona and we're going to go do the Phelps Dodge Hospital because we he, see how amazing it is and the evidence. Yeah. And then a couple of weeks after that, Tony's like, uh, you know, that we, we lost the location. It <laughs> yep. was sold. The realtor took oh. it off. Like, oh. We were like broken. We were like, yeah. oh no. So That's we're okay. like, how do we fix this vacation plan? How do we yeah. get everybody together? And then we said, you know what? We can take a trip when we travel in the fall. Why don't you guys come here? You've had so many guests on the show from here who've talked about these locations let us see what we can set up and so um by the grace of god and, and our friends like matt haas and anthony seminelli we got uh, kingsland manor on friday night the sixth we have uh, kreischer mansion in staten island on the seventh on saturday we have selma mansion in norristown pennsylvania on the eighth and then we have white hill mansion on monday the ninth which is chronologically almost i think going in age order like white hill mansion this is the, something we love that the Rathmans are experiencing for the first time. It was built in 1723. That's 53 years before this wow. was the United States of America. That's awesome. Crazy. It's so awesome. I love that. That's I cool. love them all. They're all I think great. Selma and White Hill are both 1700s, and I think Kreischer and, and uh, Kingsland Manor for Friday are 1800s. Yes. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. That's, that's freaking awesome. Yeah, that's, that's really so cool. cool. Just from the history standpoint, to walk through a place like that, even if you don't yeah. get like, well, that's cool. That's <laughs> yeah, like I just want to sit there and see the building. I yeah. mean, yeah. let alone what happens. Yeah. You know, I, I've, I've always said that, you know, and part of it's growing up back east is that there's so much older history there. You know, because you figure everything started there and headed out west, basically. Yeah. So right. they don't you know, have it's just like 400 year old buildings out here. We weren't here back then <laughs> i mean we, we have we have history but it's not n nothing yeah. like it is back east and you know it's it's really a somber point to phelps dodge because if you think about it it's been in our backyard for how many yeah. years and we've never had a chance to go to it and so now sad. that really sucks that it's gone yeah <laughs> it's right like, before we it. were gonna go it went away yeah it's and okay. then i keep it I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was say I keep telling Tony that you know if that backs out, we know plenty of people who will help put that you know down payment on. <laughs> There'll be nine <laughs> people on the title, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Who cares? We should try. We'll yeah. figure it out. Heck yeah. 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 That's crazy. Um, one well, thing, if I, one thing, if I can say too, because this is a statement on behalf of the entire field, which includes all of us, um, in talking to to the woman Dawn from the Historical Society at White Hill Mansion, again, 1723. Uh, one of the ways they made it through the pandemic 
and that they're still kicking and going was from ghost hunting, mm -hmm. from yeah. revenue streams that came from paranormal investigators. So when people think we're just running around in the dark talking to stuff we can't see because we have no hobby. Yeah. There's so there's more, there's another side to it. And I think right. that yep. that's, that's such a, uh, anybody in the field should be proud of that because yeah. you, those dollars you spend for that weekend is, is, is what they history use, alive. Right. Yeah. And it's what they use to restore, to keep it alive. Absolutely. You know? yep. Yep. And that's, is, that that's a great point, Ron, because you know, our, our sister group, AZ Paranormal with Vinny, you know, he does a lot of the tours up in globe and everything. And that's, yep. that's always that's been his fair. mission is to take whatever money they get for donations mm -hmm. and put it back yep. into the, preserving right. these sites because that's what keeps it around right because like phelps right. dodge places like that eventually they're going to get torn down if we don't keep them up and keep the history alive and you know as long as i think paranormal groups are going in these places yeah. I think they, they have a fighting chance to stay alive yeah. so they can, always, they can really make so much money from craft fairs you know <laughs> you're gonna make so much from a wicker keychain <laughs> right. right you're gonna get a lot more from people going what did that door just slam right <laughs> exactly <laughs> and then they tell all their friends yep mm -hmm. yeah, yep that's awesome. That's great. That's great that you brought that point up because that is important to keep people aware of that. You know what we do has more than just the purpose of us trying to find out the answers. It it really does help out these locations. So that's yeah. that's really cool. And Miss Apple, you need to go watch that movie and you'll feel a little differently. Angela yeah. Bruton's question to the Conjuring movies. We know a little bit because we were uh, we're friends with um, Tony Sparrow and Judy Sparrow, who were the daughter of Ed and Lorraine Warren and their son-in-law and who runs the occult museum. Now he has the Annabelle doll. Um, from what he had told us, I think the last conjuring movie was more legitimate. The nun was completely made up. The first mm -hmm. two Annabelle movies were not legitimate storylines. The third one was rooted in something true. And all that craziness you see, that's not the way it happens. So I, I just want to put that in. it's based on a true story, but all that crazy wild stuff, that didn't that didn't happen, you yeah. know. It didn't happen. Things happen in the house, but not the way that we, they portray it in the movie. Yeah, watch any show yeah. with Andrea Perrin on it, or even watch shows with uh, with Carl Johnson and James Anito, because Carl yeah. Johnson and his brother Keith were were the ones who brought the case to the Warrens. They actually got the case first at the Conjuring House. So, yeah. and as Andrea Perrin says, the, the movies make her cringe because it is about her family, and she yeah. really knows what happened. And it is is the way they portray it is nowhere near how it really happened. Yeah, because that's her, her life. Yeah. 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 And I got to say, when Andrea was on your guys' show, man, she was, she was, a, I was glued to the computer because she was just an amazing guest. She really was. She's awesome. She really was. And you talk about Carl Johnson and his brother, Keith. We had Carl on The yeah. Truth About Beer. We had him on one of our Paranormal Talk episodes, and he mentioned that he was one of the first at mm -hmm. the Parent Farm. And yeah, it was just, and his brother. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And it's just, it's, it's crazy it's like, how yeah. Hollywood, twist mm -hmm. things around but they have to for entertainment value or else nobody's gonna yeah. go watch their shows but i gotta tell you right. watching yeah. sleepless unrest that was, <laughs> some of the evidence they got was pretty pretty good. shaking to me yeah yeah, yeah very much yeah so. but, but you also have to think about it we're looking at it from a different perspective now True. we're looking at it not just as entertainment ooh a scary movie we're looking at it as if i was sitting at that table and this just happened i'd probably pee myself <laughs> bring up tony's comment because that's I, I have to agree with Tony on this only because it's you can watch yeah, it in a movie yeah. all day long, but when it happens to you in yeah. real life, it's a totally right. different experience. Yeah. When you hear right. that door close or yep. Yeah. That's true. No, that's absolutely that's true. true. That's that's a, that's such a, a, a brilliant point that he brought up mm -hmm. because uh, we watch these movies and you, and you there's a scare factor because they hit you with the unexpected and they put the music there and dun 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 and all yeah, that. Yeah, you know it's coming. Right. right. But I, just as an example, the first time I went to David Omen's house, the Omen house in Beverly Hills, where the Manson Tate murders happened on mm. the land, not that house. Seven of us watched a picture frame come off the wall in slow motion, one hook at a time, like a person would do it um, just by itself. It's got a glass front. It's got a frame. It's got weight to it. An earthquake would have went straight down. Mm -hmm. I have no explanation for that. Um, I saw it. I know I saw it. Um, there was no trickery involved for sure. And you know, it's it's it goes beyond uh, skepticism and belief. It's an experience. Yeah. Make of, make of it what you will. Explain it how you can. But it's like what I'm what I'm trying to say too with the with the movies how they make it so scary. Mm -hmm. Even though those events didn't happen that extreme, but whatever did, that is scary because you yeah. know that is happening. It's yeah. happening, and you know it's not normal. 
So right. it, it absolutely, I'm sure it was 10 times, maybe 20 <laughs> times worse yeah. in oh, real yeah. life. Yeah. You, you guys know how much, no matter how much reading and, and uh, investigating you do, when, when something that staggering happens, you're not prepared. Yeah. No. <laughs> No, <laughs> not at all. Nope. Been there. You can yeah. even say that you're prepared and be like, this is going to happen today. And you're still that. Prepared. Yeah. That's, <laughs> right. yeah. That's true. That's cool. All right. So let's get to some questions. Oh, here. Sir, are we actually going to do our show? Are we just going to, you know, be oh, it's great. in almost it's great, 20 minutes. Great, so. great conversation. Get to, you know. So, so for our, for our listeners, let's hear about how you guys met. Ah, well, um, Uh-oh, it's I, was gonna be good. A, I was working at a car wash and no, <laughs> here you go. Here you go. I'm making up. We, we met, we met online. We met through a, a, a dating app at the time. Um, and people go, how do you like online dating? I'm not, I'm not dating online. We, we met online and then we dated in person. It's like, if you met somebody at the supermarket, how do you like that supermarket dating? No, I didn't. <laughs> it's pretty good. You know, the supermarket since we've met, I don't know if you know that. Yeah. We're no longer there. We're no, you don't just, you know, chat at the yeah. supermarket and then leave. Okay. Right. So we met, um, we met that way. I had started doing this. I'm from New Jersey where we are now. I started investigating about almost 10 years ago now in, in Southern California. I lived in Los Angeles at the Queen Mary, Glen Tavern Inn, um, a bunch of places like that. Uh, loved it out there, still do. And when I moved back in 2014, we met almost two years later. And uh, I had been working with a team when I first moved back that went defunct shortly after. Um, a couple that ran it moved uh, to Western Pennsylvania and that was all she wrote. Um, so I was looking for stuff to do. And, and then when we met, she had an interest in this stuff. And then I'll let her take it from there. But that was kind of how we both ended up on this. Yeah. So when I was looking on the online dating app, <laughs> I had experiences as a child, you know, that traumatized me or whatever. And I was interested in the ghost hunting or whatever. And actually, my daughter, my oldest daughter, got me into watching ghost hunters and ghost adventures. And then I kind of dropped off. And then when I was looking through the app and I saw, I was like, Huh, he's kind of cute and he's into ghost hunting. Hmm. And I so I clicked and, and that's how we <laughs> like, you know, and then we had a lot of similarities family wise. Our morals and stuff are, are the same. And and he was interesting. And then he took me to a couple of places. I'm like, yep, that's it. He's the one and I'm hooked to all this. Let's do this. <laughs> like I'm in all of it. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. We have we have morals. Yeah, yeah, we have. Hey, yeah. Uh, yeah. What are those? Yeah, we don't do that. We don't do that anymore. You're so silly. I didn't know. Crazy. <sighs> don't you bring up that religion thing either? Just you know, then yeah, we know I, you're I, really I, nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, that's another whole story. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, that just took care of questions one, two, three. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Sorry, guys. You, you, you did your Good homework. Job. They've been watching. They're the last ones. They gotta, you know, right. You know. Yeah. Hey, that's a, listen, that's a hard act to follow the Rathmans and then and then all good killer combination. That's a hard yep. act to follow. <laughs> so they did their homework. Yes, they did. Very yeah. much so. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the what was the very just kind of talk about the very first investigation you guys went on together? Together? Ah, together. Yeah. Was the first oh, time. I thought you were gonna remember it right away. Oh, it was a residential <laughs> case. Yes. Yes, it was it a was. residential case, yeah. I, I, I talked to some guy at the gym who had dabbled in it. He bought a bunch of gear, he didn't do a lot. Um, and at the time that was when the team I was with, which was um Central Jersey Paranormal Research Group, had had kind of really I mean, they were still in in technically alive, but they stopped actively doing almost everything. They were talking about places and then we we weren't going anywhere, and so I was looking for places and I happened to meet this guy at the gym who saw one of my shirts that said something about haunted whatever you know and um he goes hey uh he told me what he did and he had dabbled in it and he goes I had this case this friend of mine's parents house or whatever or something you want to do it and this was around the time when we were newly dating at the and grocery like, store yeah <laughs> <laughs> correct so it's a smooth transition to go from cream and sugar right into goat. Yeah. So it's all in the same it's all the same aisle. I thought yeah. you knew that. <laughs> I'm not gonna say yeah. anything cream and sugar. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was it wasn't a real extreme case, and normally I wouldn't I wouldn't uh advise uh putting your toe in the water residentially versus like maybe at a historical place. But it seemed kind of low key. The guy was like a friend of the friend, kind of whatever for him. So it wasn't a high stakes thing. We weren't really involved with having to do the pre interview and all that stuff. He just wanted us to come along, yeah. um, mainly for some of the stuff that I do with audio. And then I've now that I've got her doing with me, 
That was the first one. And then after that, was it California we did? Was it after that residential? We didn't do anything else here until we went to California, I think. Possibly. Yeah. And that's when we did the Omen House and then the Omen House of Queen Mary and, and Pasadena, and Pasadena Playhouse, Playhouse, where I got affected like oh. really bad. Yeah. yeah. And I, I was new. I was a new investment. Yeah. So yeah. I could I could tell. I was walking behind her by four feet and I could tell she was off. I went something's wrong with her. Yeah. And then the the one shaman or, or medium they had took her outside and did a whole thing, whatever, and she needed to be cleared. Yeah. 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 So. So would you say then, would you say then being connected the way you guys are connected, do you, would you say it's beneficial or does it hinder you at all? Do you see, or, or a little of both? I, I would say communicatively, um, any connection amongst the people is part of, um, is part of the, the human circuit when you're doing any kind of communication. We're, we run on DC current, right? We're, mm. we're electrical in nature. So I think that when we do stuff with radio or ghost boxes or anything like that, <coughs> same reason they join hands in seance, you're creating, there's a circuitry, there's a, there's a collective energy. It, um, it's called morphogenic fields. Uh, Dr. Rupert Sheldrake coined as, or said as, um, he was one of the people who sat in on the skull experiment um, that happened in the UK for the five years. And so I think that that, that and, and intent is part of what fuels it. So when you have a group that's <coughs> doing stuff, if you have, um, defectors if you have you know those who are not really on board and think it's all a bunch of caca which is mm. spanish for <laughs> caca right <laughs> <laughs> you know it's universal I, it. yeah. I, I i do i think i have like my own connection towards the other side and so does he and when we combine it together i think yes we do get a lot of good stuff there's sometimes when if i'm getting effect he automatically just knows he just yeah. knows like we're that connected mm -hmm. so i do think that is beneficial yes the, the two of us and you know our group and whoever else we we are around when we do investigations yeah right and it's yeah. just so it doesn't sound to people watching like it's all a bunch of hokum too like brain scans and stuff can pick up on, on energies and waves that are based on an emotional state if you if you are on a train with a bunch of people and there's someone who's extremely sad and you notice that your brain will create patterns to mimic that you'll feel it you'll empathize and well, so, and that's, and that's measurable scientifically. So for, for people who think this connective energy and group energy and stuff is, is a bunch of crap, there, there's, there's more science behind this stuff than people realize. The right. key is to recognize it. Cause some people don't recognize that they're having this, they don't, they like dismiss it. So that's, yeah. I think that's the key. Well, we have all the proof. If you look at all the brain scans from people that are in comas and the, one of the tests they'll do to try to consider you brain dead is they'll bring your family members in and have them talk to you. And if right. your brain does nothing, because that's a voice, you know, that's a presence you can feel, you know what I mean? You're going to pick up on that. So you'll watch everything just kind of light up when you see somebody they know come in the room. Yeah. Yeah. yeah bring up, bring so. up Angela's question. That's a good question. <clears throat> have you ever ran from an investigation? That's um, funny. No, not not for, yet. Not for, not for the dead. Um, maybe from the living. <laughs> <laughs> well, isn't that what Chris was saying? Yeah. That yeah. the last time he's like, there's somebody in here and it's like super work mode just instantly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. It's so true. It's like yeah. we hear something and we go to it. We don't yeah. run from it. Exactly. <laughs> you have that 30 seconds of what the hell was that? Right. Okay, and let's go see. <laughs> <laughs> yep. yeah. I, I hate I hate to say it in this in these terms too, but one of the reasons why in a lot of cases we won't run from an investigation is because we dropped cash. Yeah, True. exactly. <laughs> right. We pay good be money there. to be here. Yep. <laughs> and we go yeah. for every milk and cranny. If we can stay there until mm -hmm. seven o'clock in the morning, we will. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well we, that we, was we get our money's worth every time. Yeah. Oh, that yeah. was us yeah. at the jail. When we were there the two nights, we're like, can we go during the day? She's like, absolutely. Yeah. We were there for like four hours during the day. It yeah. Was, yeah. But it's we it's see. nice to see it during the day because, you know, at night, it's such a huge place. So you kind of get your bearings on where you are and which way you're facing when you look out the mm -hmm. window. So yeah. it was really nice. And like you guys, you guys have proven over and over again. Sorry, Waters, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, go ahead. I know we have a little delay. Um you still get activity during the day. Oh, I mean, yeah. activity just doesn't yeah. happen at night. You guys have proven that over and over again. Yep. So no, there's no, there's no, there's no scientific evidence or anything that suggests that it's only activity only happens during the day. Right. Um, people think we do it at night just because that's when it's spookier. The thing is, is that what we try to do, and I know you guys do this because we saw your evidence too. Um, 
you try to vet and authenticate the, the legitimacy of what you get. And so mm -hmm. when you have a greater control of your environment, you have a better chance of doing that. You have less foot traffic, you know, vehicle traffic, lights coming in windows, mm -hmm. noises. I mean, there's, there's so much more control over the environment, um, even photographically too. You don't have, imagine the, the orb problems you would have in the middle of the day if you, oh, can't, yeah. block all, if you can't block all the windows. It's just, yeah. Activity can happen any moment of the day. The mm -hmm. only reason, like Ron says, that we do it at night is just for contamination reasons well, to not have, you know, contamination. Perfect. And by the same mm -hmm. token, by the same token, too, because we specify with audio doing direct radio and ITC work, um, it is also something that we've kind of concluded is that you really, based on, on the criteria of capturing vocals, anomalous vocals, cannot deem a location haunted just on predicated on that. Because right. I can get vocals here, I can yep. get them there, I can get, get them, them at anywhere, one location. Anytime. You need to corroborate a, a more than one piece of evidence, more than one thing happening yep. at a location to, to say that the actual place is haunted, not just that you're capturing anomalous voices. Right, because yep. we're all connected and you yep. can get you can get communication any time of day, anywhere. That doesn't mean that it's a haunted place. <clears throat> Scariest investigation. See the question? Isaiah Bruton. Oh, these are great questions. I know. Scariest investigation? I would say Hinsdale for me. Yeah. And the Pasadena Playhouse because I got affected so badly. But but Hinsdale would be, and it wasn't, I just had a scary moment <laughs> that I ran down the stairs. I was up, <laughs> I was upstairs and I was, and they told me, don't go by yourself anywhere. But of course, I love doing that. I don't know why. Yeah. But I wasn't investigating. I was just putting REM pods all over the yeah. place. Right. Went upstairs. And this is just a personal experience. So um, as I was putting the rem, I put one in the corner and I walked back and I went to go to put the other two. And I felt like this energy, like this force, like rushing towards me. Mm. Like I felt like it was going to come inside me. And I got terrified and I ran down the stairs. I was like, oh my fuck. And I ran down the stairs and <laughs> I told everyone, but I honestly feel like if I didn't like that, that, that force mm -hmm. was trying to, jump inside me right yeah. it's a personal experience but that's what i experienced it's and everybody was like we told you not to go <laughs> <laughs> you're like trust that's me i'm not doing it again <laughs> so you know, and i did it up into two neg ne negatively too, yeah yeah answer. so we, we, have yeah. A we have a term called hinsdale Lordis. <laughs> 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 because that's everybody awesome. knows oh, her she's God. really low-key and easy going and stuff and there was it was me and, and it was four of the women there were five of us and we were doing an evp thing upstairs and she was sitting with her back to the one window so she's here, and then there's two of us on these sides of her, like in this circle kind of. A, right. And she goes like this, and we look <laughs> at each other, and then she's like this again. So then the other girl goes, do you hear something? She goes, no. I'm like, you sure you hear something? She goes, no. I said, but you, you turned your head. She goes, I didn't move. <laughs> 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 oh. And right. even though the words are not so bad, but it's my tone, and they know how I was how i am and so they just looked at me like okay <laughs> <laughs> and from that point forward we made sure we had snacks for her because we right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so i need a snack. She was angry maybe <laughs> just just feed the demon it's give her, okay give her, yeah. <laughs> give her snickers yep oh, that's what they give me snickers <laughs> that's true. there you go see it works <laughs> yes it, it satisfies me <laughs> yeah I, I mean i know in the past and i'm I'm the least person to feel things. I guess, I guess, I don't know. I, <laughs> one of these days I will, it, it'll happen to me, but I've gone into some rooms where I, I just turn around and go, Nope, not going in there. I ju you just get this overwhelming feeling like, no, nah, which is yeah, usually, which is usually me. That's you. That's right. Cause you're I'll walk. I, I don't, I'm always the first one to go somewhere. Cause I don't know. Apparently I'm the, gutsiest one in the group but then as soon as i get to a door i'm like nope y'all can go first yep. <laughs> yeah. we are one of the only species that, that teaches ourselves to ignore our instincts yeah right. true right. we Absolutely. do through, through experience and through judgment and, and through bias we we teach ourselves to not trust those feelings and a lot of times you know, we have we have cognitive biases that will will sometimes steer you away from or towards something that may or may not be good for you and it's and it's just a fact. Those things happen. There are people if they are dead set against all paranormal stuff being real, and then they take a test like like the Zener cards where you have to guess what the card is when it's turned over. Right. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Their mind tells them that that's a diamond. They may still answer circle because their 
their biases because well, they're doubting. They don't want to be right because then that validates mm -hmm. something that goes contradictory to what they say they believe. Yep. And so you'll have that cognitive bias that'll switch tracks on you mid thing. So it's it's very real. It's very well, important to to um, listen to your instincts. It's very. I tell my girls all the time: if you're hanging out with a group of people, or whatever, and your gut is telling you yep. something's wrong, that means something is wrong, and you need to go. Trust right. your instincts. And I really think. And I don't know, again, this is maybe just from being a girl. And Lourdes, you double back me on this. I think that girls are taught to trust their instincts more than boys are. Because what are the That's what does your mom tell you? Don't don't be around guys. If you get a different, if you get a weird feeling around somebody, leave. I think the guys are raised, you have to be tough. You have to just go in there and own the place. And I think yeah. that's kind of where that disconnect is between boys and girls is we've been told forever by our by our moms, if you feel something weird, you leave. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. And we so. get we get a bad feeling. It's like something doesn't feel right. No, never mind. It was that was just gas. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, was, I shouldn't have ate that pepperoni pizza earlier. I'm okay. Yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> but it's true. I, I agree. I, I agree with you. I never thought about it like that. But yeah, I would say that's a great I, point. Yeah. Yep, I agree. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you were just telling your girls that. And I, I I mean, growing up, that's the way we were always, you know, the first time you go to the bar, you have to make sure you pay attention to everybody. If you get this weird vibe from somebody, you don't go near them. Like that's, that's true. Yeah. You know, that's yeah. the way girls were raised. So look at Tony's comment. <laughs> He's such a don't I, mean, my, I agree. My instinct says stop, stop working. <laughs> <laughs> he is we, incapable of stopping working. I yeah. know, right? He's, always, say, he's one of the hardest his, working people in the field. Yeah, so what's his version of working though? <laughs> working on yeah. what? Yeah. <laughs> you know what he's bad at? Resting. He's bad at exactly. resting. Exactly. He's good at working. Yeah. That's if it's his regular job with paranormal, he's always working. Yeah, he is. He's a, that's a busy man right there. Yeah. He's, he's passionate about it. That's yeah. what's cool. Yeah. And Wendy, too. See? <laughs> that instinct, <laughs> Wendy. Which instinct were you listening to, though? <laughs> Wendy's a, Wendy's a go-for-it kind of girl, too. Yeah, she me just, and her. She just runs that right in. But and, you know. we're both the same ones that when something rushes up on us, yeah. you guys are just standing there, and we're running the other way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, what just happened? Yeah. <laughs> so... Uh, we're leaving y'all to get attacked. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you see us run, you better run. <laughs> I know, so do, right? So yeah. do you guys think it's clear? My drink, my drink is green. Oh, yeah. I am. Oh, my, cup, my cup half disappears too. Look at the tops all weird. I love when that happens. <laughs> it's funny. I've been wanting to do that for weeks. We have we have it on, on our other show, The Truth About Beer. We have an alien we put behind us. He's oh, got yeah. green eyes. And a lot of times yeah. you'll see him and the eyes just disappear. And you see, and the, it's creepy you see as the thing behind it. it. Yeah, it's, pretty, cool. it's pretty funny. And then your beer cans and they disappear. You're like, well, there <laughs> yeah, is a can green. here. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So, so do you guys like investigating better as a couple or in a group? Or is it is it depend on the investigation or the situation? I enjoy both. I, I, I mean, because I, I love investigating with him, obviously, because I do. But I love when, when we have a, a good group of friends, great investigators, mm -hmm. and and we just, our energy together collectively is just really, really good. And I think that's why we get really good stuff. Yeah, right? I, I, so. I agree. If the group of people is, is cohesive or you have a good camaraderie and stuff, I think it's it always makes the experience better because you can't guarantee paranormal experience, but you, you're, you're going to have an evening or an a experience good time. at a place. You can make that good um, by enjoying the process and enjoying the company. I think it, you know, every time I've ever done stuff with a group that was a, a public event, that was what I would always preach is that you can't promise them they're going to see an apparition or something's going to move or whatever, but yeah. you can give them a good experience. You can, you can teach them what's going on. You can explain things. You can, you know, show people stuff and at least make the experience that they have, whatever it is, you know, something positive. But I like the smaller groups sometimes too better just because of the same thing we talked about before with contamination. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, I've been a part of things where, where somebody has got the best EVP ever until it wasn't because it was that person yeah. who was whispering or whatever and didn't know not to do that or something. So, yeah. I mean, we do direct radio voice as a couple just me and him because we do it here. And we usually um, invite Anthony to do it. He's on the phone. Oh, Anthony Seminelli Anthony from Seminelli. Se Seekers Club of the Paranormal. So, yep. Yeah. So I, I think it's fun to do it with the group. But 
keep it small. Yeah, yeah. that's what I would say. Yeah. That run, that was actually probably out of all the shows we've done so far. That's why I love this show so much because that's one of the best explanations I've heard of why it's good to do it with, with a big group. Aside from the paranormal aspect, you just can have a good time and meet a, yep. you know, meet some good people and, and they can learn a lot from the experience that mm -hmm. they have, even if they don't see anything that night, you know? Yeah. So that's, that, that, I, I like fun. that answer. Well, that was that's when it. we did the tours. I like doing that because you get all these, you, what was it? That one group we'd had with all the ladies when we were at the train, train depot. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it was, I think it was an office something or other. And there was probably 10 total and there was five with me and then five with him and Joey. And we kept getting the spirit box. You know, we had the spirit box going, teaching them about all the different equipment and everybody was, you know, something lights up and they're like, Oh, is that what it's supposed to do? So I think that's kind of cool. Cause you get to teach them that. Mm -hmm. But the spirit box kept saying my name. Awesome. It said it like three times before this. And then Keith had to come in to get batteries because all the equipment was with in the big building with us. And he walks in and it said my name again. He turns around and looks and he's like, did that just say your name? <laughs> <laughs> and the girl was like, it said it like five times. <laughs> he's awesome. like, okay. And he just walks out. <laughs> That's so, bonus when you can do that because yep. that, now you're giving him evidence yeah paranormal, exactly paranormal as well mm -hmm. yeah. but that's when, you, when the cool. people pay to be there you have to do as much as you can to guarantee they got their money's worth and they yeah. come back for, for both the support of your group if you run the place and the support of the location if it's yeah. making any money off of it for restoration purposes so. absolutely yeah and I, and I think it's great for people to really see what we do yeah. i mean you know we're, we're yeah. still very new at this yes. but to to to, you know, I think everybody has their people on the outside have their opinions when it comes to paranormal investigating. They watch Ghost Hunters, they watch all the shows, yeah. and they're like, oh, it's just a bunch of crap. It's just fake. But then when they actually get on the inside and they actually get to see what we experience each time, I think that really yeah. helps. It helps our field, you know, because yeah. it helps people understand, hey, you know what? You're not going <laughs> to always get something when you go out. So I yeah, think that's, that's really that's cool. That's true, for one. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> that's true. That's absolutely nothing like, true. It's nothing like empirical experience. <laughs> Anytime I've talked to people like it works and we go, oh, you oh, don't tell me you believe in ghosts. And well, first of all, define ghosts because I, I don't know how many experiments you've done, but I've been doing this for about 10 years now. And for me, it's not a belief system. For me, it's, it's empirical experience. I, I have opinions, theories, anecdotes, whatever, that are based on my experience, experience of people that I know and trust and I work with. And that's, that's where my thoughts are formulated from. It's not a, it's not a belief thing. But people, you know, when you don't have any practical experience and then you're going off of what you've heard and what you think and how right. it infringes or not upon your other beliefs and biases. Right. Yeah. And I, I think it's interesting because I work in the hospital and I'm always a little timid to kind of tell people, you know, what I believe and what I do. But once you get to hang out with somebody, you kind of it sneaks out usually and they're like, you do what? And 99% of the time they're like, Oh my God, I love that stuff. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. That, yeah. that is the positive side of TV uh, and media. Cause that tide is turned for that reason. Yeah. And exactly. many people have their own story. They yeah. have their own story. Exactly. And they don't say it until someone says it. And yeah. they're like, yeah. Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> well this well, one time. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Yep. Or I had a friend or a sister or something, something. that this happened to. And yeah. 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 And the, be the yeah. best, the best one is when they say, <laughs> and they go, I don't believe in ghosts or any of this crap, but I see this apparition walking through the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But there's this dude that goes in my cabinet every time. You're like, what? Yeah. That, that's funny. <laughs> that's funny. <sighs> like, it's like saying you're a vegetarian while you're eating a hamburger. You can't yeah, exactly. Well, you yep. Know. Yep. No. Could be a veggie burger. You don't know. So this, <laughs> yeah. this, this next question I have for you guys is my favorite. I love this question. You like to raise trouble. <laughs> so what qualities? I'm all, where's Cherie? Yeah, Come on, Cherie, right. tell him. She's going to yell at you. Um, what She's qualities you. do you guys find beneficial in each other when it comes to investigating? Oh, that's easy. That's for me, that's easy. It's always easier for the guys. That is not well, fair. Hopefully Gosh. it's not too hard for her. If it is, <laughs> I'll take an intermission. I'll go, you know, I'll go have a cup of coffee, read a book. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> give her give her 20 minutes she'll think about I, it <laughs> i think i know what he's gonna say and i mean what are you gonna say? yeah she has super hearing she works as a court reporter by trade so a lot of times i'll pick out an entire phrase on a direct radio voice recording like a whole sentence 
that I would never have found because I didn't hear any of it at first. And she caught the, she was holding that's a word. Go back. And then it's the whole thing. She's a really, really good ear. She has a trained ear. Um, she listens to people. I've heard some of her recordings that she does for work and uh, how these people are even involved in the legal system. I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> it's like reading doctor's writing. You're like, what? Oh my God. Yeah. So she, that's, that would be the short answer for me is that she has a really, really good ear. She has a good attention to detail and she has a good ear. And that's, that's, that's cool. huge because we, spe we have a specificity in audio. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. See, was and that in the, um, in the grocery store files that she has a really good ear? <laughs> is that why you picked her? <laughs> it is too. It is. It is. He may have found out how good my hearing was yeah. during the process. Yeah. Oh, okay. Right. <laughs> during the and process he was, file. Yeah. He was like, I can use this for my advantage. <laughs> that, that was that was a bonus. That was the little yeah. star on the bottom. Exactly. Side. Uh, great hearing. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. I was on the loudspeaker at the supermarket. Short attraction right. in aisle four. Short, attractive man, aisle four. Short, attractive man. <laughs> Who likes or paranormal. Short, attractive. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's awesome. All she saw was paranormal. It's fine. You were yeah. Well, exactly. <laughs> She's right. For me, what I love about him is his dedication. And he, he, he motivates me. He's really good at what he does. He's very um, knowledgeable. And he's just dedicated, and I love that quality about him. It brings the better, that the best out of me, yeah, right. because of who he is. So that's what I love us being as a couple. It's 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 just a great pair, I think, when it comes to this and then anything that we do. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> I think so too. Go. Yeah, <laughs> I love Sheree. That was great. <laughs> she cracks the hardest great. question she ever had. <laughs> Sheree's so funny. I love Sheree. She is so funny. We we cannot wait to work with them. Nobody believes in ghosts, but everyone's afraid of them. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. One hundred percent. It's so true that, that we're coming out of the negative halo culture when when it was taboo to even mention or you know the experience or thought whatever, you know, and and just the flashback when we had Andrea Perron on that was the thing that I was impressed with was because she dealt with the actual conjuring house with the actual stuff that happened at a time when nobody was allowed to just come out and talk about it. It was like, shut up. That's no, you're crazy. So that's that, you know, you had social pressure as well as, you know, right. what the hell was happening to me. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But I can only imagine people in their homes thinking that and having stuff happen and feeling like they're going to be outcast if they say something. Mm -hmm. But um, I feel like they were meant to go through that because yeah. That's why Andrea is who she is today, which mm -hmm. is a very important a part in the field as it is now. Like, I, absolutely, it's, just, it's yeah. amazing. Pos positive it, activist. Yes, because you yeah. need to be positive. You got to, whatever she experienced, she put it into the positive sense instead of just kind of tucking it away and keeping it like a yeah. negative thing. Right. And I think yeah. that, that was part of the reason why she went through that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She had to experience it to help change the future. Yep. Yep. Yeah. No yep. negative yep. tucking is what we're saying. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no exactly. tucking, period, please. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> <laughs> please don't do that. Yes. <laughs> or she would have thought you were a short, unattractive woman in the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> I get that sometimes. <laughs> She's great. I know. She's great. I get that sometimes. <laughs> we didn't want to say anything. See, but, you know. I... <laughs> I'm lucky because I don't have to say shit this entire show because she can. She's got it all right there. So <laughs> uh, you guys work really well together. Yeah, I'm like you said, I don't talk for the last like four shows. Well, that's why I gave you the keyboard. But hey, apparently that's the power. <laughs> I'm gonna give it back. That's the power. <laughs> that's funny. So do you guys ever get any flack for investigating together as couples? Do you, you know, people say, "Oh, you black? couples, you make make up evidence or anything like that." Has anybody ever been negative towards you guys being a couple? No, I don't. I don't think so. I think a lot of times it, um, people realize when they're not part of a couple that does it. They realize that it makes it easier because every every minute spent, every dollar spent, every um, moment of passion spent, when you do this by yourself and your other half isn't involved, is time away from each other. Where for right. us, for us, <clears throat> that's a shared investment on all the fronts. Yeah. Which is usually we get more of a positive feedback, right? Because they're like, I wish my husband did it. I wish my wife did it. And then we don't have to argue about finances because we were spending exactly. it on, on something that we both love to do. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it makes it really easy for like 
presents and stuff because right hey hey babe i want an ovulus for my birthday yeah, <laughs> yeah. isn't it ovulus <laughs> isn't it ovulus <laughs> it is it is ovulus it's fabulous fabulously positively <laughs> ovulously <laughs> wow you're coming up with all kinds of weird words now <laughs> that's funny the other the other part of that just to kind of address to the um if there's anybody that thinks that you make up evidence then those people shouldn't be in your circle <clears throat> because one exactly. of the things one of the things that we have is, is we have our, our our credibility and we have you know our respect that you garner from from what you do your reputation right <clears throat> so and honestly a lot of the people who would be suspicious of other people making stuff up never think it through the other steps forward like people who have unbelievable evidence who have come forth with it in whatever arena nobody's gotten a rich off of it um nobody's famous 15 minutes or more of, of it right. from that right. so the, the incentive to do it i mean um dr anibal cordoza who whose books um started me out doing direct radio voice and then thus us uh, she gave up she was the first female diplomat to the country of portugal and she gave up her relationship she gave up a lot of her career stuff to passion. pursue the passion, passion. and, and yeah. the heightened interest in, in all of this. So, uh, you know, there's so much more, you know, we sacrifice time, we spend money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's not, it's not a profit thing. So really the incentive to, to hoax things and fool things and to, and honestly, we're not in it for that. That's and if you thing. bring it to the people that you would need to bring it to those people, I always say would not believe in Bigfoot if Bigfoot handed them their car keys. True. Exactly. That's true. Because they already have a vested interest in the position that they have or they're, or they're tenured in it some way. Mm -hmm. And then they're just not, they're not flipping the coin to the other side and all of a sudden saying, all right, I'm into this now. It's not yeah. going to happen. Right. We're yeah. not yeah. here to, to be famous. It's just, it's, it's, we've had paranormal experiences. I had it as a child. We get, um, I mean, it's amazing when you get a voice in a, a digital recorder and you know, it's just, me and him it's like yeah. how is that possible when you get voices on a sweeping radio how is that possible yeah. you know right. like, there's so many questions and we're seeking the answers we're not going to fake things just because we want to be famous because that's not what we do it we do it right. because the passion and we want to know we have questions we have questions yeah. This it, is it's happening. A, it's all in that one answer, that one big question everybody has. What happens when we die? Right? Right. That's, that's right. just what we're looking for. And a lot of a lot of people who are just casual or even critical with this stuff don't they don't think through so many other like you know, because you do this, you guys know there's so many more verticals to this than people realize. Mm. Nobody even looks past. You'll hear a lot of people say the afterlife, and you hear and they'll also say life after death. And and in most instances, people use those two terms synonymously. But technically, yeah. there's there's separate connotation to that. The afterlife is 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 a uh, is a location. It has it's more of a, a destination of where we would go when our essence or luminous self yeah. whatever passes on. Life after death is a continuation. It's a continuance of our essence or our soul. So right. there's, there's, even on that level, there's there's such finite differences between something that that the casual person who doesn't buy into this stuff will see is just the same. Oh, it's just the same thing. No, those are those are completely different connotations. You just have to, yeah. you got to put the time in and, and there's plenty of brilliant people who did this before we even knew what it was. Yeah. Know them, familiarize yourself with them. Cause if you're fighting a battle to, to profess a belief to anybody who's even mildly skeptical, chances are somebody before you has fought it. They fought it well and they backed it up. Right. I got you know, Ron. I got to say something that really impresses the hell out of me with you is you 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 really are a book of knowledge. You do a lot of research, it seems, on stuff, and I I commend you for that. Honestly, I mean, you you every time every why every show I've seen with you, you just you just come out with this knowledge, and I'm like, God, you got all that stored up in your head. How do you do that? I know it's you really amazing. do. <laughs> yeah. It's well, amazing because when I go to find my car keys or common sense, <laughs> that's gone. All the yeah. space is filled up. That's true. 
<laughs> There's only so much space See? in there. Every time you put yeah. something new, something else falls out. So it's like an etch a sketch. I can just yeah. go like this and then the slate. <laughs> and then it just <laughs> and he's like, Where's my keys? Oh, I don't know. I yeah, struck I that know. away. I'm sorry. I don't well, know keep... where my glasses are. I don't know. <laughs> keep doing I do. it, man, because really you I, I think you're an incredible addition to your team because you just bring so much knowledge to the plate, you know, especially when it comes to, you know, just that that book knowledge of, of what's happened in the past and I, information I you can use. I appreciate that tremendously. That that's, that's especially coming from people like you guys that we love and respect. That means a lot. Um, I'm so I'm, I'm what I, I call, I'm an inspired reader. I know people who read and read and read sci-fi romance, whatever they just read. I can't do that. But when I'm into something that I'm unstoppable, I'll keep going. Yeah. And that's why it retains. It, it retains make, because because it's I, something you're interested in. Yep. I make Passionate. notes. I make notes. I use a note app on my phone. I make notes. I go over stuff just sometimes because there's so much that we don't know. And like, there's so many people who have done this before and they've jumped through greater hoops and having to tell off some keyboard warrior on a website yep. somewhere who doesn't believe right. in stuff they've done. <clears throat> They, the people go, oh, you take take the radio in the lab, block all your radio signal, then see if you get your voices. Well, Marcello Bacci from Grosseto, Italy, did that. Mm. He had his radio opened and dissected while he was using it. No one ever found any fraud or trickery or anything. He never took a dime. So, I mean, tell him the glass story. Well, I love oh yeah. Story. So when we have these arguments or these debates with people, these things have already been vetted on a level that if you're not familiar with that, you're already weakening your own position mm -hmm. as someone who buys into or spends time doing this. Marcello Bacci was investigated for a number of years, not in a bad way, but just by a very curious group called Il Laboratorio in, in Italy. And um, the one lead guy, Paolo Pressi, um, had talked to him and they had his radio wide open so they could see all the parts. They checked it, inspected it. Right. He, would do, he would do sittings weekly or monthly in Grosseto, Italy for parents would come in who lost children. And a, a moderator would come through and then bring forth the voices of what sounded like their children. And these parents identified the voices. It was phenomenal. Never took a time. Wow. He did it weekly. You'll never see anything this impressive on a ghost hunting show, but this happened in our field. Which shows intent, good intent. Yes, but go ahead. absolutely. He had yeah. apports. If the kid was into surfing, a seashell would pop up under the parent's chair while they were sitting there. Now, I don't know how somebody sneaks up under your chair and puts seashells mm -hmm. without you right. seeing it. So... So he does this thing. So Pressy says to him, he tells Bachi, he goes, listen, he goes, we're going to take out, this is before transistors and radios are, this is a vacuum tube radio he's using. Um, we're going to take out one of the three vacuum tubes. If you still get voices, we're going to take out two. If you still get them, we're going to take out all three. Then if you get voices, I will eat the two. The so they, tubes. Yeah, so they did it. <laughs> And they took out one, they took out two, they took out three. They even unplugged the radio and Bocce was still getting vocals through the box. Wow. And so awesome. he, he looked at Pressy and he goes, no, no, don't eat two. It's glass. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know that. <laughs> That's a great story. Right? That's, great. That's, That's incredible. Story. The history of the history of it is fascinating. Um, I, I didn't know when I first started about the Skull Experiment, when they did sittings twice a week for five years in a seance thing in the basement of a home in Skull. Robin Foy and his wife, Sandra, um, I remember the, the other name, the other couple now that was part of it. Two couples. Eventually, I think it started with three, and they had unprecedented evidence, film reels that were locked up in cases under lock and key that were sitting in a case in the session the whole time. Everything was locked. They had bracelets on that glowed in the dark and were Velcro. If anybody moved, or took it off, you would see it. They were, they it, were yeah. strapped to the chairs. Like, Nobody could stuff. touch each other under the table. It was partitioned. Mm -hmm. And they were getting film rolls that had photos of Paris and different places. Even on. signature of Thomas Edison. Thomas Edison and signature. Oh my the God. museum validated. Yep. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. The stuff that they got was amazing. So, amazing. Wow. so when people tell you there's no such thing as the paranormal and all this stuff is crap, if you don't know that stuff, you're, you're putting yourself in, in a more difficult position to try to explain it. You know, that people have tried to explain these things and they haven't, they haven't been able to. Bocce was never caught doing anything. And he went through the ringer. They yeah. brought his radio into a lab. They blocked all RF signal. People think, oh, you get, you, you get a Faraday cage and you put it in your spirit box and then they run an external speaker. Well, with the external speaker, the wire going to the speaker is now functioning as an antenna. It's an antenna, right. For one. And for two, Faraday cages don't bounce the RF signals off. They conduct them. That's how they don't reach the radio because it's conducting on the perimeter versus permeating the, the, the pouch and getting into where the radio is. And still, like when we do direct radio voice, we don't need we don't need the vocal fragments like a sweeping ghost box, let's say, would have. And it still, it still produces vocals. We did a, a direct radio session here like two months ago. We had the big boom box that we have, in the, I think, in our profile picture on Facebook. 
and we, had, we let it run like Bocce would for 15, 20 minutes to get what's called the connection bridge established. <clears throat> we get up and we go to walk over to the kitchen to get something to drink while it's running. And we get through the second doorway and we get right over by the kitchen and we heard a voice clearly come out of the radio and goes, you're leaving. We're both like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> you're leaving? <laughs> so, we both just You're stopped. like, we're coming back. <laughs> That's but we, do, we do love the sweeping ghost boxes. I even brought up, I had a few. This is the TR604 <laughs> made by Halte Paranormal, Stephen Katie Halte. This is a sweeping ghost box, AM, FM, linear sweep. Um, Austin Maynard. Made me this one. It's a QFX box. It's got um, it's a XR1, right? Yep, XR1 Model 2. It's got shortwave, longwave, AM, FM. It's got a solar panel on the back. That's cool. It's got That's a cool. Sweep, sweep circuit with band trimming on it. Um, Katie Holte made this box. I love this one. It's green. So <laughs> oh, it's, it's green. so cute. It's, 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 <laughs> it's got AM, FM. It's got random and linear sweep. So linear sweep for people watching is when it just goes from the low numbers to the high or, or if it's reversed the other way. Randoms where it jumps around the band, not necessarily in any order. And then I have this one that Katie made, which is called the Forever Box. It's got AM, That's FM, cool. random, linear, and it's got forward and reverse speech. So I can have it wow. literally backward speech half of the words and forward the other half at the same time. That's cool. And it's got that cool. big boom box. That and, then we got the, and then we got a bunch of the long wave radio <laughs> yeah. and stuff and that we use for, for direct radio and voice. So we love the we audio stuff. Audio stuff is permanent paranormal objects. We can go over them, over them, over them, over them. It's not like, you know, I felt something touch me and then you can't right. show that again. Yeah. yeah. Can we come hang out with you guys for a week? We would of love course. that. I, I yeah, would love so to. Not in, no, not in the summer. No, not in the summer. No, but I, I would love to experience some well. of that stuff. That would be really cool. That would be very cool. Bring up uh, Elaine's question. Was, I, want, I was waiting. Well, I want to get Cherie's question, too. She was asking that to everybody. I mostly disagree when you guys investigate with your partners. <laughs> I know where she's going with this. <laughs> Tell her she's not making trouble. She doesn't get to yeah. know. So Elaine Curtis, have you both thing. ever heard different responses on an EVP as in the same words sounded different to both? And what do you do in that situation? We will call this combined answer the Curtis Rathman question. Yep. There you go. Mm -hmm. but it's, it's similar. Um, sometimes, sometimes we hear different stuff. Um, <clears throat> if you're in a couple and you do paranormal investigating and you haven't said the phrase, I can't believe you didn't hear that. Or, or what the hell are you hearing or whatever, then you're not and really you're not a, a real couple. Right. Um, <laughs> it's going to happen. It's a lot of it's interpretive. Sometimes um, there, there are drop off sounds. There, there are allophones or phonemes in speech where sometimes people go, y'all coming or something, whatever. You're not saying you all coming. So there's, there's different ways that speech can be interpreted or comes across. And, and we may hear things differently. A lot of times we hear the same stuff, which is pretty cool. But sometimes we may not hear the exact same thing. And so you have to, here's what you have to know, I guess. The, the best way to kind of get through it as smooth as possible is you have to understand that even though you can't understand how they're not hearing it, if they're pushing back, that's because they genuinely believe that they're hearing what they're hearing as well. Yeah. And so you really can't, the, the worst argument to have in that situation is you're right, I'm wrong, I'm right, you're wrong, because it's you really don't know now, you, yeah. if you really want to put it to the test, you can use an audio spectrograph. You can use an audio software, and you can say what you think you hear vocally, and then you can do a voice print. Mm -hmm. And if, if the spectrograph image matches the vocals that you've uttered that you think you've heard, then you've got yourselves a winner. <laughs> yeah, That's good. That's I good think um, most of the time we do agree. Yeah. We do agree. Yeah. And when we don't, we don't present that as evidence. But my belief is, though, when – Clearly, there's something there. Yeah. And if he's hearing something differently than me, and we're both like, I hear this, and I, and we're both like strongly about <laughs> it, I believe that it's probably because obviously there's something there, but there's a different message for him than it is for me. Exactly. That's what I, that's what I think. <laughs> Tony, but when you can't agree, you can't agree, and we can't use it. But I, what I truly believe when that happens is because there's a specific message for me, and there's a specific yep. message for him. Yeah, and that so, and that can yeah. certainly happen too. I mean, we just we went out. Uh, my, my ex, my son's mom, and and her husband are, are good friends of ours. We went out with them just recently, like a week or two ago. And we were in, we were in the car, and she's next to me, and he's behind her. So I'm on a diagonal to, to her, my ex's husband, and she's on a diagonal from my ex. And we were talking, the men were talking, and the women were talking at the same time. So I'm listening to this. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So 
<laughs> at the same at the same time, and it's so there were two conversations going on from the same place, the back coming right. forward, but one message was meant for me, the other one was meant for her. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes if it's through intent, because we don't know when we're when we're communicating with what's perceivably the other side, yeah. we don't know what goes into communication from her. There may be energies at play that we don't have in our realm. Yeah. Um, they may have, if it's of a finer matter, higher vibrational frequency, then you have transduction, you have the reducing or, or the slowing down of the vibrations to make it perceivable through modulation of a radio or receiver or whatever it is, or, you know, you know, like an EVP if a, if a device captures it. And so mm -hmm. when you have transduction, you have, you have degradation of sound, you'll have quality issues too sometimes. Right. Um, and that's, that's, what's called temporal synchronization. You have receiver and transmitter in two different places, which is not typical radio reception where right. we are, right? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Radio. So you're going to have drop off. You're going to have connection issues. The duration of, of these audio clips, especially when you capture EVP, um, they're variable, but they all stay within a certain amount of time. You don't have a three second audio clip and then a three hour audio clip they're all yeah. kind of in the same ballpark and i think this the temporal synchronization is part of it yeah. great that's a great explanation of it too and, and especially yeah. your story that, that really kind of got me thinking there for a minute that's, that's cool that's, that's true though because i mean if think about i mean even just the jail what if the the old prisoners are trying to talk to you but then they're tr you know they're trying to say something else different to the women or something you know who knows what that message yeah. is for each person yeah. mm -hmm. we we assess yeah. we assess based on the knowledge that we have of, of our of our realm because we don't know what's on yeah. wherever they are right with that realm we don't know what's there yeah. so mm -hmm. when we hear a voice that's that's quieter we assume it was always lacking energy yeah. or it was for you know whatever but it, it could be further away yeah. from the device um, where like even the Doppler effect when something comes closer and then it, it perceivably gets louder mm -hmm. and then it fades again, it could right. be something on the order of that with regard to audio. Um, it could be also because people say, you know, the theory is that they don't have vocal cords. Right. So maybe whatever ambient noise that they're using is mm -hmm. why it comes so loud or so low or True. even, yeah. even male or female because sometimes yeah. i feel like even though you may be getting a deeper tone yep. it may not necessarily mean that it's a, a male because they're using whatever <clears throat> that they can to produce that sound through vocal cords i'm not saying that that is the case no, all the that's time a, that's but, a great point know, though especially no, with the, especially with the ghost box if the vocal fragments that they're manipulating are male or female at the given time or the tonality is synonymous with that gender it yep. doesn't mean that the gender of the thought form that sent the uh, the message is of the same gender. You, yeah. we, we really we don't, don't know. We don't know. We don't well, know. That's the thing. Or even when it comes down to one of the classes we had to take in the hospital is like how to not be offensive, how to not be aggressive when you speak or when you talk. Mm -hmm. um, and they say to lower your voice. That the higher pitch when you get stressed in your vocal right. cords mm -hmm. tense, that it becomes more aggressive. So it could be somebody coming across trying to be calm, trying to not scare you, good trying point. to talk to you. So I never Absol thought about that. Absolutely. That's a good point. Absolutely. Another context too is that like if you're in a public place, right? If we're riding on a train somewhere and we see some wackadoo and we wanna we, we wanna comment on 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 what he's wearing, you know, two different shoes or whatever else, our general tendency to communicate amongst each other is to, to, to lower our voices yep. and try not mm -hmm. to be heard. So a lot of times when we pick up on communication, who's to say that it's even intended for us, even if it's yeah. commenting on us, maybe yeah. one of the vocals on an EVP or on a recording is intentionally quieter because they don't want us to hear them. Yeah. <clears throat> Right. Maybe they're just talking amongst each other and they're like, yeah. look at those crazy people over there in the grocery the store. We're the ones wearing the two different shoes. <laughs> you, you, you must live in New Jersey. Yeah, you must live in yeah, New yeah. Jersey. Yeah, We're in New Jersey. This is the state bird of New Jersey. Is this. <laughs> I can see the wings. They're so pretty. <laughs> well, that's funny. That's funny. It's fascinating. It's fascinating stuff because we don't know. We don't know. We don't control at least 50% of the equation we don't control. That's yeah. a big, when we big question there. You Have you ever let a number of others listen to see if they hear what you heard or something entirely different again? I think sound is a minefield once it hits the brain and it's just fascinating. It's great to be able to ask a couple that as obviously there are a few different perspectives. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we, um, we've, we've produced clips of audio evidence before. Um, 
So one of the reasons why, I mean, it's more applicable to EVP that people know it, but we apply it to ITC stuff too, or radio voices, is that's why there's a classification system, A, B, C. People go, oh, listen, it's a, it's a class A EVP. And then you, right. class A by definition means it is not any question. You know what it's saying, you know how it's saying it, the, the, the pronunciation, everything is spot on. B is when you know it's an anomalous vocal, you can hear something being spoken, but you don't really know 100%. You're kind of guessing, you know, it might be this, it might be that. Class C is when you can tell it's an anomalous vocal, but it's really difficult to discern between the syllables or what it's saying. You're not sure where the pauses are, etc. cetera. Um, we use those those criteria when we when we assess any vocal evidence that we go over. And, and because, like we said, people will hear things differently sometimes. Even when we agree on something, sometimes we'll send it over to Anthony Simonelli and we go, hey, did you hear that? It goes, pet the cat. And he goes, I heard hot dogs are on sale. Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 what we do is, is interpretive. And that's, right. that's part yeah. of the problem. You know? I think the vocals, when they're more interpretive, we don't present, right? Because yeah. that's, I guess, our own individual message maybe. Like, yeah. who knows? But the ones that are crystal clear, the ones that if it says we're selling hot dogs and we send it to Anthony and he says, yep, I hear they're selling hot dogs, those are the type <laughs> of that evidence that we present. Yep. But the interpretive <laughs> ones, you know, that's, I guess, more of a personal thing and yeah. we just speak for ourselves and we don't present those, you know, yeah. to the public. And the type the, the type, type A's, in my, in my opinion, in my experience, are rare. Yeah, I mean, I don't know if you They're guys make it. You get you you make it more of them because of what you guys do, more audio based. But for us, I know we'll get a lot that you go. Well, I think it said that, it, it, and we'll have a difference of opinion on what it said. So, the, I, I think one of the really best ones, and it was me, Rebecca. Who was that other guy that went with us to the train yard or to the airplane thing? The guy that plays oh, the bass yeah, in the band. I don't remember what his name was. Yeah, whatever his name is. So we were all sitting in this one abandoned plane. And we just had a little, you know, recorder in our hand and it was us three. And so we were talking, having a good chat and there was a noise that happened behind me. And, you know, we didn't, we turned around didn't think nothing of it and then went to go play back the EVPs and you hear this woman's voice go, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he, both of our eyes got big and he was like, was that either one of you? And I'm like, no, I'm not really a shit girl. I'm usually more of a fuck girl. So, <laughs> and then we played it again and we was obviously not any of us, but it was, it was just like one of those, you know, somebody like your big sister walked in your room and you're like, shit. Yeah. Like crazy. that deep breath. Yeah. It was to absolutely clear. And none of everybody knew exactly what it said. <laughs> and you like, heard it at the yeah. moment. And yeah. it's on the recorder probably, right? Yeah. It was on the recorder. It was so yeah. funny. Yeah, that's awesome. We really had good. we had a we had when we were starting doing direct radio all, all the the research and this is if I can plug it just for the hell of it. Uh, this is Dr. Annabelle Cordoso's book, Glimpses of Another World. It's her third book. She's brilliant. Um, she really is brilliant. <clears throat> she worked with all the best. She worked with Bachi. She worked with Robin Foy from Skull Experiment. Amazing woman. Um, yeah, and I talked all the time. She's a sweetheart. Great evidence. She heard direct radio voices is is ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> to what was I going to say? We were talking about the um. I was trying to follow. <laughs> Well, what she said about her amazing cast that she yes. had at the time. We right. So the research said that when you first start doing direct radio voice, like a lot of the early DRV or EVP researchers, you're going to use the white noise as audio support. It'll help facilitate EVP voices. Um, then you may hear some, I guess they call them direct voices, and then direct radio voices when you'll start. It'll start coming through the radio. We had an EVP period, just like it said. And then we had an abundance of direct radio voices afterwards. The middle phase of direct voices that came out of the environment, almost I guess we'd consider disembodied out, out in the field. Mm -hmm. We had a few, not a lot of those. You know what I'm talking about. There was one that happened where, where I used to live. Um, I just finished speaking. I'm not sure which one you're going to say. Oh, the there's a hint. Oh, okay. I should have said it. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. Ahead, it was, no, I, mean, I want you to take the torch with it, but it was a full male voice it that came was, in right after I shut up. I kept saying, give us a hint. Give us what can we do to better communication? Can you please give us a hint? And there's this. What do you think it is? Do you think it's an EVP or do you think it's direct radio voice? I think it's a direct voice. I think it was. Oh, my God. It was. Because it was audible, unlike an EVP. It um, was like a, a man. Another man was in the room with us. He goes, awesome. here's a hint. Just like that. I mean, wow. I'm still amazed by here's a hint. And I know that's not his voice. Right. And that, yeah. it was just me and him. I just the stopped kids, talking. The kids wasn't with us or anything. You know, 
it was just me and him. That's Here's so a hint. I know. I'm like, I, I was freaking out. I was, I'm still freaked That's out awesome. by it. That's it's cool. awesome. Yeah. That's really yeah. Cool. pretty cool. I just want to tell everybody who's on right now. Thanks for hanging in with us. I know we're over our time, yes. but I, I could talk to you guys all freaking day. I know. Honestly, we could. I, mean, wow, we, I love talking to you guys. Thank you. We appreciate it. We love, we love round table and it's a different experience. I guess when we're the guests. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Thank no, you for yeah, having us. Seriously. No, it's yeah. really cool. It's so do you, do you guys actually investigate in your own home? Um, I wouldn't phrase it that way. Um, some might say yes, because we do stuff here. Mm -hmm. um, we do they, sessions. Yeah, we do direct radio voice sittings the same way like uh, a psychic will do regular sittings with a reader or whatever. Right here where we <laughs> sit. Yeah, but we do we do them because direct radio voice is a grind to get a really authentic kick ass direct radio voice is, is is as rare or more rare than a class A EVP, and it takes time. And, and so we would routine. literally do a yes routine schedule, and we would do a sitting every week the same night almost the same hour for two years straight without missing a, a week because he, it's a grind to, to develop the, the schedule and the discipline, et cetera. And then yeah. mm -hmm. the supposedly gives them an idea of when to find a connection and how, et cetera. And so we would do that constantly. Um, so we're not like investigating, like doing, you know, we don't set up REM pods and K2 right. meters mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And but we have run them a little bit just to see if there's any kind of a, a measurable difference when vocals did come in. Um, but, but by and large, it, the, the situation we have is in order to to do that kind of research and i made this decision before we moved in together here when, when I'm, i was in the apartment building next door and then she would be with me was that i either have to rent a space to do seatings weekly mm -hmm. or i have to bite the bullet and do and i went through a period when i wouldn't turn on a spirit box or do stuff in my house <laughs> but it's also a different mindset the european um, itc is a different mindset it's not ghosts and spirits and malevolence and stuff flying all around you right it's, you're connecting with another dimension or realm and you can do that from anywhere and you develop a space and, and a and a place to do it and they believe that you're communicating with ports of communication like stations like there is there is a technology that's in play and it, and that may sound far-fetched or crazy to some people but if you think about it even in our realm right now radio waves are flying past your head yep. you don't oh, hear yeah. them because it's not it's not modulated down to a level that you can perceive it. So, so we don't do investigations. What we do is research. That's what we do yeah. in our okay. home. So we have never investigated in our own home, but we do do the research in our home with sessions. Yeah. Yeah, and just in order to do that with regularity, we had to we had to make the decision whether or not we would do it, you know, at home, because it has to be routine. Yep. To do it, and then we'll do it out in the field. We've done one of the best direct radio voices we ever got was at the first place on the Ford Mansion tour that we're doing with uh, with Tony and Cherie, mm -hmm. which is King Kingsland Manor. It was National Ghost Hunting Day like two years ago, and we left the boombox down there running on 222 kilohertz oh, long yeah. wave. And it was <laughs> all night, all night. And then at the end of the night, everybody went upstairs for a QA, and a and the, the camera from the broadcast on the web thing saw the room completely empty. And all of a sudden, you hear what's called the noise floor. You hear that static level, and it drops off and then you start hearing hey hey and then a full female vocal came through and says what the hell harlot put your family heart in it it's insane get yeah. up wow and that was a That's speakeasy crazy. and there was prostitution in there and at the time that happened the historian verified that harlot would have been the term they that, used that's the yeah. term that they would use yeah, yeah. it's guess, amazing wow. it's amazing it's full female vocal that oh. was one of the best ones we've ever one gotten yeah and then at the shanley hotel in upstate that's new york another one. we let it run for four or five hours when we slept a few hours at night and it was hours of hours like poor thing he listened to the whole thing <sighs> and it's oh. at the end of course yeah, at, at the end, the end. Yes, it is. <laughs> Just start right. at the end next time. Yeah. I know, right? That's smart. smart. <laughs> and then at the same thing, the noise floor bottoms out, and the frequency was it was two 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 kilohertz. That was our sweet spot for a while. It still is, I guess. And then um, it bottoms out and gets silent. And then all of a sudden, this very robotic, synthesized, metallic voice goes, "We are with him." Wow. I know. It's so I love it. And I, I, I played it back and went, "Well, I'm the only him in the room. What, yeah. do, they, what do they mean? Right. What, are they, what are they with him with? What's the what?" <laughs> Are they still with him? <laughs> <laughs> but even it's so funny because even when we were sleeping before he even reviewed it, I could hear like a voice in the radio, but I was yeah. like, saying, Ron, yeah, you're in that weird, up. like, yeah. Ron, yeah. 
wake up. I could hear. And, and then we are with him. So they had to be talking about you, baby. That's, <laughs> That's crazy. crazy. That's awesome. They wanted you to wake up so you could be with him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're actually That's going great. up there next next weekend um, with, uh, with Scotty, the psychic of New Jersey, um, Chris DeCesare, the ghost boy of Geneseo. And then us two, we're going up for Saturday, Sunday. Um, Chris DeCesare is doing a presentation um, Saturday, and then there's an investigation Saturday night at the Shamley Hotel in uh, Napanock, New York. Um, not, the, not the Napanock. Stanley, the Shamley. Um, it's it's amazing. Uh, yeah. Whatever another place we tried to get for the for the the Rathman's visit, and then I'm doing an ITC presentation along with Lourdes on Sunday uh, next weekend too. So we'll get to spew some of a uh, of the, I just of love the battle we learned. Napanock. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> Why does New thing. York have crazy names? Where are you from? What's your high school name? Sachem was my high school. No, it's so uh, weird. Most of our schools had Indian names, That's though, so growing strange. up on Long Island. So Pennsylvania is the best. Tribes. If, you, if, you drive yeah. West oh, on, yeah. if you drive west on Pennsylvania, <laughs> The name. Yeah, there's a town called Intercourse, Pennsylvania. <laughs> oh, see, and, that's where I need to go live. And oh, wait, it gets better. And you, you, I'm pretty sure this is map verifiable. If you, in order to get to Intercourse, Pennsylvania, you have to go through an area called Blue Balls. <laughs> that's true. Uh, that's so true. And what's the next? What's the next city? That is, Hookersville. That I is mean. awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Isn't it? I love it. Facts, people. Facts. Yeah, I'm telling you, it's awesome. <laughs> stuff. We can prove that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just Google it. It'll be oh. right there. Yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> Well, I don't even I don't even think I have to ask the last question because I know the answer to it. So has investigating helped your relationship outside of investigating? Yes, <laughs> I would say yes. <laughs> I would I would say yes, because it, it's uh, anything that you bond over. You know, sometimes couples don't watch the same things, don't like the same types of movies. You know, you have a friend they don't like or vice versa. We don't have any of those any of those differences. Right. Um, so because of this, we have the same circle of friends. Um we have the same interests and stuff. Even when we watch things, we both watch Sleepless Unrest. Yep. <laughs> Nobody had to force anybody to watch it. So, I mean, for right. the most part, we're on the same page with it. I think it, uh, yeah, I think it adds. Yeah. It helps a lot. It's, yeah. I mean, we get along great as it is. And then this is just a bonus. We could tell. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, well, like you said earlier, it is kind of nice. When you're not going, babe, I'm going to spend like $900 to go do this investigation right. by myself. Thanks. <laughs> I know. You're like, what? No, none of that. And we can spend the cost. So exactly. You you're like, babe, you're going to pay four fifty. dollars Thanks. <laughs> yeah. That's cool. The, 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 Absolutely the, helps. The couples thing is fun, too. That's that's We love the same thing about you guys. Um, we love that about, we were guests originally on, on Entity Voices with Chris and Audra and Tony Cherie, and then they invited us to be on the show. And we love that too, because they're all so good at what they do. Oh, yeah. Everybody has a, enough of a uniqueness to their perspective mm -hmm. or to their experience. And and I could listen to them the same way you had said about us, and we appreciate it. I could listen to them talk all, all night. All day, yeah. Of what they know and what they do. And I mean, Tony's a fantastic host. Um Chris really, we joke, I make like a running joke of it, but he does have skills of observation that are not normal. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, he really does pick up specific details that so many people would kind of like. Yes. Just glance just over. By, yeah. 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 That's yep. an asset. Oh, heck yeah. Especially when you walk into something and you're like, that chair's moved. And everybody's like, no, most it's people not. Wouldn't it's still even in the corner. It. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Then you go and look and the dust, it's moved like three inches or something. Yeah. Yeah, that would be that would be good. That's we need cool. to investigate together. That yes, we Definitely. will absolutely come out and see some of those crazy old places. Yeah, if you come out amazing. for sure. And then perhaps, too, if we're looking at the fall, since we didn't get to go to to Phelps Dodge, we want to see if we can still take a trip out. We, usually we were up until pre pandemic. We would um, we would go out to Los Angeles area, Southern California yeah. every, every year. And when David Oman would have us over for dinner and then let us run through the house till four in the morning. Yeah. Um, we would spend a couple nights on the Queen Mary. And so in, unless that becomes available again, if yeah. we take a trip, we're going to be looking at alternatives for what we can do. And Well, we can we can definitely talk offline, but we got yeah. something in the works that I've talked to yep. Tony about already and would love to include you guys in it as well because yep. you're part of that team. So That'd be fun. So we'll definitely oh, talk that about cool. that for yeah, sure. Yeah, we'd love to go. And Papa Joey, too. He's awesome. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah. we love him. Yeah, we're one big... 
like Jack. And Jack, yeah. Jack's crazy. Jack, Jack's funny. Jack's only been on a couple investigations, but he's funny. He's funny. He, you want to talk about a wall of nothingness? Like he <laughs> is the biggest cock blocker in the whole world. <laughs> Oh my goodness! He's, well, that's not fair to say though. He's no, only been on two investigations. Well, no, but world. I mean that's because he's. <laughs> right. so, I know that's because he's he hasn't had that experience. He hasn't had that, you know. So he just kind of stands there. Give him time. I know. I'm, I time. can't wait till their, something happens. Their evidence with Phelps Dodge, I, I think, really kind of turned him, you know, and yeah. a little so. bit, right? Because I loved his reaction with that. Oh my finger. goodness! Oh my god, that was great. You should have seen him downstairs in the kitchen. He was like, "What the hell was that?" <laughs> yeah, he was talking about the rest of the night. I mean, he oh, just yeah, yeah. He, he, he even the following week he brought it yeah. up again. He's so funny. <laughs> he was impressed yeah. with some of the audio stuff that we presented, but that yeah. the wide the, the shadow the shadow figures in the hallway from yeah. Phelps Dodge that, that Tony and Cherie captured. That's so, that is so oh. rare at yeah. that yeah. level. It's just that's insanity at its best. Yeah, and, and it's wonderful to see someone like him. Yeah, react that way towards it. Oh yeah. yeah. Awesome. It was awesome. Absolutely. Well, it's it's hard for people like Jack, Papa Joey, and myself because we're we're musicians. We've been musicians most of our lives. And we come from a different part of the audio side, you know. Yeah. So when you start when you start presenting evidence like that, it I think in in fairness to Jack, he starts to question things because mm -hmm. we know how stuff could be manipulated. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think right. it's only natural to question some things, but to, to be able to see it and witness it firsthand, and Jack has on our last investigation yeah. we did. I think it really starts to turn your opinion yeah. on things. So it's yeah, kind of cool needs, to see he that needs happen. A couple, a couple of good ones. Yeah. And I think yeah. he'll be with the rest of us. Yeah. That's, that's where credibility and reputation come into play too, because every piece of evidence you're going to come across that somebody shows or that you get to see, you're not going to be at every capture moment when yeah. they, when it happened. Right. So, you know, like Tony Rathman will show me a piece of evidence and I'll go, all right, well, I don't even think, Maybe it's manipulation or that because I don't think that Tony Rathman's the type of person to do that. Right, yeah. exactly. He wouldn't your even character, bring it to you. Yeah, your character speaks for you first, and yeah. that's yeah. that's the lesson for the the would be investigators watching. Is you're you're a human being of decency or not first. You're an investigator, whether you want your big TV show or not. That's second. Yeah. Right. Well, and what I love about Jack though, he's genuine. So yeah. he may be a skeptic, but. You can just tell he wants to experience yeah. these things. Mm -hmm. He's not trying to shoot it down just to shoot it down. No. But that's, yeah. that's, the, that's an actual skeptic. Right. Yeah. Uh, right. Yes, he is an actual you'll hear skeptic. You'll hear me yes. preach that on every show that we do almost, is that there's a huge difference. There's a, there's, a, there's a use of the term skeptic in the field for people who don't believe anything's paranormal and try to shoot it down. That's not a skeptic. That's yeah. a believer. They're right. just a believer in an opposing paradigm to the person who thinks that everything is paranormal. Right. Yeah. Somewhere right. in between is where the truth lies. But the skeptic term is used because societally and socially it has positive connotations of someone who's more well read, well mm -hmm. studied, well spoken, sophisticated, whatever, educated. So they use that term. But that's not that's not what it is. A skeptic looks at, looks for absolution and truth. So if your mindset is that none of this stuff is real, and I'm going to show you how you're not a skeptic. You're just you're just not using the term believer because you've given it to the people who think everything is. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> well, <laughs> we're 24 minutes over. I know. <laughs> it, was good. It, it was a great show, guys. I, I, I really I appreciate but, you guys coming on. Look, I'm all tongue tied for some reason today. <laughs> we bullshitted the first 20 minutes, so we're actually right on time. That's true. <laughs> that is true. That's a good yeah. point. That's See? a good point. That's a great point. made up for it. When you're having exactly. a good time, time flies. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. It does. But yeah, seriously, guys, I, I really want to thank you. It was a pleasure having you on. And um, oh, thank you. Thank you. We're definitely gonna do more in the future. Absolutely, one hundred percent. We would, I, we would love to work with you guys. Absolutely, yeah, it'd, it'd, it'd be, be a lot of fun. I we can learn so much from you guys. Oh my We're goodness! Really I, I want to learn about all that radio stuff. I know it's fascinating. Because I'm not techie like that. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we we can talk offline, but just in case anybody watching is mildly curious, direct radio voice is not complicated. Um, it's more of a grind. It's more of a dedication thing than it is a technology thing. Okay. You can get, I can show you, I have smaller radios. You can get a shortwave, longwave radio, a world band radio, and fix it to a, a frequency without radio emissions and sit. Yep, you and can take a radio that you have right it, now. Yep, and record it, hmm. and that's it. It's um, more of the grind. That's what it is. It's, it's the grind. Yeah. It's developing a schedule and a routine, and it's more of a grind. Then you have to listen to that. Now, there are things you can do with software um, for live filtration, like a VST software, a virtual studio. You can... Um, you could do things to to uh, 
um, like the guitar effects pedals that people use on all the portal devices. You can mm -hmm. use some of that, like you can use a, a limited amount of a noise gate or reverb mm -hmm. just to, to sweeten it a little bit. You don't want to go crazy with it and make it harder to hear. Um, and you can use certain softwares like WavePad or Audacity or whatever people use Adobe to to filter out some of that noise and clean it up. It's just not a quick fix like a spirit box. Yeah. That's the right. difference. We we need that quick fix here in the United States. We want it yeah. quick. We want it now. Of course. And and that is more of a you got to really sit down and, yeah. and kind of do the hard work. Yeah. And it's a pure the purity of it is what makes it fascinating and worthwhile. Yeah, yep. it's, it's it's a half a step away from EVP when you're just out of thin air with a recorder capturing a voice. Right. You're just running a white noise frequency, and instead of providing audio support for the vocal, it facilitates it like a medium, and it comes cool. through it. But when you get that coming through, like especially that that Harlot one that we got at Kingsman, right? It's, That's it's so phenomenal. Cool. There's there's no there's, there's, there's no explanation for it. Yeah, nobody yeah. broadcasts on that long wave frequency for eight hours in a row, and now all of a sudden no. somebody's coming through and they're saying Harlot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> the odds are slim. It could happen. <laughs> well, cool, guys. Well, Papa Joey jumped on a little bit late, but he said hi to you guys, and he's going to definitely look awesome. for the replay. You guys, you guys have the best radio on. voices. Seriously. Seriously. <laughs> oh, my God. You guys have such great voices for, for, for voice work. Yeah. God. Bless them. <laughs> I always think Papa Joe was way better than I am as far as he's so bad. goes. But he's so yeah, bad. but you both have mm -hmm. yeah, distinctive good. voices. They work well yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah. Really, yeah, really well. They're, they're so good together. And we yeah. appreciate that. We we have a lot of fun doing what we're doing. So it's it's neat to and I, we love presenting people like you guys. I mean, it's just the, the world needs to know about you guys, and you know we're we're here to do that. We're here to bring you to the forefront. You, you know, nobody's trying to get rich off Is of it. Is that what we're but doing? I didn't that's know what that. We're doing. Oh, okay. Apparently well, that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. That's yeah. what we're doing. And we thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. I didn't know it till just now, but you're welcome. <laughs> oh, you knew it. Come on. If it were not for these opportunities, we would still be in the supermarket. That's right. You know, <laughs> shit happens. Right. That's true. That is a good point. Uh, we met online, by the way. So yeah. Props to you guys. That's awesome. Yes. <laughs> I don't think we were at the supermarket. <laughs> no, we weren't at the supermarket. But hey, you know, everybody's got to start somewhere. Yeah, you, you know, know, you know. So. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much. We're going to let you guys go. We're going to wrap this up yes. and uh, look forward to talking to you again real soon. And we will talk offline for sure. Yes. Yes, for sure. Thank you. Again thank you, for, thank you for coming. Thank you. All right, guys. Bye, guys. Enjoy your Sunday. Yes. You too. All right. Thank you. They're, They're amazing. Awesome. They're awesome. I could talk to them like I, I was like I looked forever. I suddenly looked up and I'm like oh shit what time is it Yeah it's <laughs> like kidding. one o'clock yeah it's terrible terrible Yes so Well well thank you, thank Ron. you for sticking thank you with Lourdes. us you guys are awesome yeah thank you for everybody <laughs> hanging out with us we really appreciate it on a Sunday Um go ahead and put that uh picture back up there so you know we were talking a little bit oh, about it on. in the episode if you have not stream the movie yet oh. you need to go see it sleep with some rest it is well worth it yes very cool if you want to see what it's like to be a paranormal investigator not in hollywood yep. <laughs> that's a that's a great opportunity for you guys well, to see that so. and then they were talking about that the spirit box like a class a mm -hmm. when it is giving them directions and that's all i'm saying that was crazy that is that was crazy Right, to stop, me, stop that's, talking. Yeah. You're going to give more of it away. Don't do well, that. No, they have to go. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> go watch it. Yes, it's so good. But we, yeah, we appreciate you guys hanging on with us today. And uh, speaking of Papa Joey and myself, if you guys are interested in watching our show, it's Truth About Beer. And this one. we're on Tuesday nights, dun, dun, dun. 6.30 Pacific time. Go check it out. Uh, if you're interested in uh, reading some paranormal books, my dad's got a bios to book show that he does and he's a uh, paranormal fiction writer and go check out some of those books and check out a show. He interviews some great people. We had uh Patty Negri on. Yep. So uh, he's, he gets some good guests on there talking about their books. So if you're yep. into the paranormal, and that's he's a got good the show new to check one, out. The new one coming, which is going to be good. Yeah. We'll talk about that. Not, okay. not right. Not right yet. But. The new one's coming. I'm I know, excited coming. about it's it. Okay. Soon. So you check that out. I got my uh, little health program that I'm doing, helping me on my journey to lose weight called Highway to Your Health. So check that out. I'd appreciate um, you guys following me on that. I can use all the help I can get on that and the support. And if you guys are in the market for any equipment, please go check out Ghost Hunters Outlet, our friend uh, Vinny with AZ Paranormal. You can get all the equipment you need from him. Yes. Uh, make sure There's you go still check that out. Orders I need to make to I know. him. I still need to make some orders. I know. I remember that, that every time we do this, that I need to go call <laughs> Vinny. Yep. So... 
Well, that's going to do it. That's going to wrap up our Entity Voices three-part series with uh, Ronald Wardis today. It was a great, great finish to the series. We really appreciate those guys coming. We appreciate everybody coming on. Tony, Cherie, Chris, and Audrey. Every you, single you, one was amazing. You, you guys are really just, just incredible. And I really do hope we get the opportunity to hang out with you guys in the future and do some investigating. Well, Tony and Cherie, definitely. Well, they're local. We better hang out with them. <laughs> so, I know. They're only an hour away. Right, Come on Exactly. Now. Exactly. So, all right, guys. So in two weeks, we'll be back with another show. We got some good guests coming up for you guys. Yes. And um, until then, we hope you have a wonderful weekend. Yes. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. This one? Yeah, that one. <laughs>